everybody, welcome back to Zane Customs. In this week's episode, I'm going to be sculpting the Ravager from the video game Minecraft. So, like most of my sculpts, I start this one off in Forger, which is an app for the iPad Pro. And I actually spent most of my time in Forger for this sculpt. Um, like I've said in the past, it just kind of depends sculpt to sculpt what's easier. If it's a, something that's going to take a lot of cutting or a lot of extra detail that I can't get on Forger then I'll go to ZBrush pretty early on but this one was pretty simple so I spent most of the time on Forger for this sculpt. So as you can see on the right side of the screen I have a lot of reference photos up while I'm sculpting and you can also see that you know obviously I got a bison and you'll see in a bit I have a rhino. I kind of use those as references because even though the Ravager is its own creature you know, it's, it's not supposed to be a rhino or a bison. There are certain similarities to me that I saw between the Ravager and other creatures, so I decided to kind of use those. And again, this is part of a series of videos where I make Minecraft mobs and creatures more realistic, so kind of had to pull from real life animals to get that more realistic look. And I ended up pulling from bison and the rhino. For most of it. One of the struggles with this in particular was the face because the Ravager has a big nose which is kind of iconic to Minecraft I guess you could say and I'm not uh, the biggest fan of the big nose. Um, I want to make it look more realistic and cool and when you go to animals, animals sometimes have big noses or but they're more like like a snout or something so I didn't necessarily want to just give it a big nose, so that was kind of a hard line to toe. And also, as you see, it looks like a bull for quite a bit, and then also his face ends up looking like a, a pit bull, like a dog for a long time, and that's not something I was going for. I do want to leave his head really big and kind of boxy um, to kind of have an homage to the actual fact that it's a Minecraft creature, but as you can see, I do a lot of work on the face and the snout in particular because he, right now he looks like a bull. Later on he ends up looking a little bit like a dog and I just kind of go back and forth till I get something I'm happy with. His legs are one thing in particular that I kind of took some artistic liberties on. In the actual model of the in-game, they're just blocks that go down. It's Minecraft, obviously everything's blocks, but there's not a lot of texture going on to allude to anything that they were going for. Um, he does have some armor going down his legs and on his back that I do add in, but the armor is kind of covering up the bottom of his feet and certain parts of his legs, so it was kind of difficult for me to tell if they were going in a specific direction with it, so I decided to just, like I said earlier, kind of rip from real life using uh, bison or rhino in particular for most of his body is more inspired by the rhino um, and his head is more inspired by a bison because the ravager has a massive head and I was just thinking what animal has a big head bison and also a bison's a big old creature like so I felt like that worked but again I'm giving him these big old almost toenail things that uh, rhinos and elephants and some of those types of animals have and I don't I don't know if that's what they were going for for the actual minecraft mob but this is you know my take on a realistic variant so I think it's all right and here's what I was talking about earlier where I go back and forth to his face and his nose a lot um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell because it's moving so fast and changing angles but to me at this stage he looked a lot like a dog like a pit bull especially because I made him pretty muscular and his with his chest popping out like that so I had to tweak it a lot, give him a longer snout, and make his uh, kind of cheekbones thinner. That was something I struggled with a lot, mainly his head, just to get it right. But you see here I got a picture of a, a bison on the right, and you can see it does have a pretty massive head, so I used that a lot for inspiration for this, for his head in particular. Another reason I wanted to use rhinos as inspiration is because they're their skin or their hide almost it folds and almost looks like armor in certain photos and if you've played the game you know that 
if you're near a village, then these pillagers can come in and attack and kind of raid the village and try to kill all your villagers and kill you. And every once in a while, they'll be riding in on these uh, ravagers. So I wanted the ravagers to look like they're pretty sturdy animals and they are gonna have armor, which is what you can see me doing now, is adding in some armor. But despite that, they I still want them to look like they're um, really tough and rugged creatures that can handle a lot of, that can go into battle and handle it well. You also notice that the Ravager is all of a sudden red. I just did that because now I'm working on his armor and I didn't want, when you, when you have two separate uh, meshes going on at once, sometimes it can be hard to tell where one starts and one, the other one ends. Um, so it's just easier for me to make the Ravager in this case red so that the armor uh, stands stands out on top of the red mesh and also you can tell that on the right I got a photo of the actual Ravager and it almost looks like his limbs go up beyond his, his actual body which I I looked around on the internet just googling things and I couldn't find any animal that's like this um, at least that I think would work in this situation and I don't know what what their goal was with this I don't know if they actually wanted their uh, the legs to go up beyond his back or if that's just supposed to be the armor that's on top of it so I don't know I kind of struggled with, with this one but in the end I just ended up having some square pieces of armor kind of resting on the the shoulders of his arms um, and I feel like that ended up working pretty well you can tell what I'm going for even though it's not exact to the Ravager again this is you know my take on what a realistic Ravager would look like. And creating a lot of this armor is actually simpler than you might think. Obviously a lot of the armor is just square, so I just create a cube and leave it at that. But some of this other stuff, I just create a sphere and then you can just pull it and warp it however you want. And once you get it to a basic shape, then you can remesh it and then you can sculpt on top of it and it works really well. That's how I got some of the straps going from it different armor pieces and then also his saddle. You just start with basic shapes like a sphere or whatever shape you want, whatever works for you, and then you can pull it out and warp it. And then what I'm doing here now is creating a chain. You can see I just start with a donut. If you mask off the top of it, then you can pull the other part down and it kind of stretches it out. And then you have a chain link. And then I just went in and added some detail. And then you can duplicate that as much times as you want and create full chains. Um, he's got one going underneath his stomach, connecting the saddle. And then he's got some hanging off the, the back part of his hind armor. But again, like I was saying with the primitives, it's actually easier to create a lot of this than you think. You just, you start with basic shapes and you pull them and warp them in certain ways and it ends up being a lot easier than you might think. All right, now I got it in ZBrush and like I said, I did most of the work for this in Forger. I'm just doing the, basically the cleanup work, doing any final details, the actual adjusting of his body. Um, I think his body looks good, but it's just in a basic pose just keep it symmetrical for uh, sculpting purposes so you don't have to sculpt two sides separately. But w once I get him pretty much done, then I'll go ahead and pose him and doing that is a lot easier in ZBrush for me at least than it is in Forger. And also that the benefit of ZBrush is uh, texturing, which you can see I'm doing here. I'm just adding some light texture across his body. Um, adding a lot of little scratches to make it look like He's war torn and also uh, some of those kind of add to the, the wrinkle effect in like his uh, elbow and stuff like that. And then I'll go in and mask off the body and what you see here, whatever's black can't move and whatever's the lighter gray is what's able to move. So I just use those, um, the masking tools, and go back and forth with that until I get a uh, pose I'm happy with. Just a simple walking pose. And then once I get him posed how I want, moving them around can create some weird geometry. So that's what I'm doing now is going in and fixing up anything that got messed up. 
redefining some lines that may have been blurred or smoothed over. And you, you can see, especially with his underbelly here, he's got a lot of weird stuff going on. But then once I get his body figured out and fix all the weird geometry, then I can go in and start um, retexturing him and making him look good again. And then I can take his armor and start warping that around to, to fit his new pose. And this was actually probably the toughest part, um, just because his armor, they're just a bunch of separate pieces, so I would have to mask one off, go in and uh, move the gizmo around to rotate it and all that stuff. And The biggest problem with something like this is if I move the rhino, or not the rhino, the, the ravager around, and I don't have everything masked off perfectly, you're gonna see, like if I move his hind leg and his horn is, happens not to be masked off, his horn's gonna move. And I'll see that pretty obviously. With this, so much of the armor is hidden inside of his body that if anything, any of the thing gets messed up, I'm not, it's gonna be hard for me to tell. And that actually happened quite a, quite a bit with this. The biggest problem you can see here is uh, the chain that goes from one part of the saddle to the other actually gets messed up. So what I had to do is go in and isolate just the saddle and then I uh, reapplied symmetry from one side to the other to get that fixed. Not not a huge deal to fix it, but something that can be avo uh, avoided if you pay closer attention. And the biggest problem with doing something like this is you can end up with some weird geometry like I did with the body. Not a huge deal. I just had to go in and fix that up. And then once I'm happy with the, the final sculpt, the pose, everything, then I can go ahead and go on to coloring. And uh, the armor was a little bit of a, a process for me. I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, the saddle and all the, the leather straps, I can just do a, a brown. And his body is kind of a grayish brown with some white splotches on there, so that wasn't too tough. But the actual armor is like a bluish green look. And I'm assuming it's supposed to be metal, so I went through a lot of different shaders before I found one I was happy with. And even though I am not a huge fan of the giant nose look that Minecraft has, I did still want to homage to it, so that's why uh, his nose is a darker brown and then the rest of his face has more uh, white splotches going on. Just to kind of allude that that's supposed to be, uh, it's more of a snout now, but it's supposed to be the big nose that he actually has in the game. And also being a uh, tough war-torn creature and taking the inspiration from the rhino earlier on, I decided to make a base that looked more deserty than some of my other ones. All right, that's the whole sculpt. I'll throw up some photos here just so you can get some uh, better images of d the different angles. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting. Let me know what you think of this sculpt. This and the last one I did, I've been leaning more into the realistic side of it, whereas some of my other ones, I they were realistic, but I had more homages towards the original Minecraft creatures being a little bit more boxy and such. With this one and my last one, which was the Phantom, I feel like I leaned a little bit heavier into the realistic side of things. And I honestly could, could go either way. I, I'm happy going more realistic or being a little bit more cartoony but let me know in the comments what you think once again thanks for watching